Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. I'm Zach, and today we're building a compact cyclone dust extractor. So no longer are you gonna have to fight with and make a huge mess emptying out your dust bags or your shop vac. Instead, because of our cyclone separator, all of that dust is going into our five gallon bucket, which is super simple, easy, and clean to remove and dump out. And zero dust is gonna be making it to our vacuum, which is going to extend our vacuum's filter life. And on top of that, you don't need to buy HEPA filter bags for this, so it's really gonna be saving you quite a bit of money in the long run. Now, this build is powered by a beefy, five horsepower compact vacuum with 100 CFM, so it can compete with those high-end dust extractors out there at a fraction of the cost, which means it's perfect for you guys with a smaller shop. And to top it all off, it's remote controlled. Now, this whole build only uses one sheet of three quarter inch plywood. It has three vents with HEPA filters on there and a hose hanger off the back. And I offer plans for this whole build. So if you're interested in those, I'll have them linked down below in the video description. Now hit the subscribe button and let's go cut up some plywood. I'm still loving my last build, the expanding outfit table. Check it out if you got a job site table saw and want more room. I'm using 3 quarter inch sand plywood for this build and I have all the dimensions needed in the plans. While everything's still flat, I'm cutting out the holes for my vents and hoses. I'm going over all my cutouts with a roundover bit to give it a more finished look and prevent hoses from catching on sharp edges, but you could also just do this with sandpaper. I'm cutting the hole in the back with a two and a half inch hole saw, starting on one side and finishing on the other in order to prevent blowout. Now, I really like using a hole saw because it is perfect, but you could just as easily use a jigsaw too. Now that all of our pieces are ready to go, it's time to start assembling. I'm going for a more exposed hardware look with some inch and a half black truss head screws, but you could also just use glue and some brad nails. I'm making sure all of my joints are square using my favorite 90 degree corner clamps. With the base and sides assembled, I'm adding a couple strips to the inside of the base that both hold the vacuum in place and give the caster wheel lag screws a bit more meat to bite into. I'm using a spacer to position the blocks that support the platform, which just makes sure that everything is perfectly level. All right, real quick, I wanna talk about today's video sponsor, Bamboo Lab. Now I've been wanting to integrate 3D printing into my shop for a while now, but 
It can be pretty difficult, but the reason I reached out to Bamboo Lab in the first place was because they make 3D printing really easy and approachable. They sent me out this P1S printer, it shows up in a box, you pull it out, you disconnect about five screws, and then it does all of its own self-calibration and it's ready to go in about 10 minutes. It's super easy and that's why I love this company, but I've been wanting to do this in the shop because I wanna really be able to personalize my builds. Like you're seeing in this one, I've got vent covers that I've custom made, I've got adapters for hoses and nozzles, I've got remote adapters, and to top it all off, what I really love as an engineer is I can hit tolerances of 0.01 inches, which means I can make really exact jigs and spacers. So in my past videos, I've made a whole shelf jig, along with I've made these spacers that are all individual sizes and they come in a nice little magnetic box, which is all available on my website now. If you wanna check those out, I'll have those linked down below in the description. If you're looking for a printer, one and done, you don't need to get another one, I highly recommend the P1S. It's super easy and really capable. There's honestly not much better on the market for the price. But if you're looking for something a little bit more entry level, I recommend the A1 and A1 Mini. Now cards on the table, they sent me this P1S, but I went ahead and bought another P1S because I loved it so much. And then I was also going, well, I need something on my desk too. So I bought an A1. I really do love this company a lot, so I can't recommend them enough. So thanks again, Bamboo Lab, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the build. With the housing assembled, I moved on to cutting out the pieces for the hose hanger and assembled it using glue and brad nails. All right, we've got our whole box all put together and it's looking really good. Now, you might notice this is a little bit different from just your standard cabinetry. Usually you would have a brace going across the top right here and that would reinforce your side plates here. But instead of that, I put in these gussets in our back corner. Real quick, Future Zach here. Turns out the plywood wasn't quite as stiff as I thought it was gonna be, so my front door was starting to sag because this wall was starting to bend a little bit. So I went ahead and added this lowered brace it's lowered because that way I don't really have any restrictions to my bucket and it's easy to pull in and out. And then this whole thing is rock solid. Plus, you don't need the gussets anymore. Now, all this is gonna be reflected in the plans, so back to present me. And now along with that, we also left this platform loose, so that way it's really easy to get our vacuum in here. And if we ever need to, we can pull it out just as easily. So, now that this is all done, it's time to fully enclose this and put our front door and our top lid on. My custom hinge guide makes locating and drilling all my holes super fast and easy. I'm also using my spacers to help position my guide accurately from the door edge. I'm drilling the main hole using a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit and a centering bit for the screw holes.
Cabinet door hinges are usually my sworn enemy, but I'm really liking the amount of adjustability that these hinges have. Alrighty, our housing is done. It's looking really good. And of course it is rock solid. So next up, it's time to get this thing mobile. And as usual, I'm gonna be attaching my four inch caster wheels. That's because two inch caster wheels might be cheaper, but they get caught up on everything you find on a shop floor, whereas four inchers are gonna roll right over it. These are the best deal I've ever found. They work really well, and I'll have them linked down below in the video description so you can check them out. Now, let's get these mounted up. All right, we've got our wheels on here, so it's time to finish this thing up. So first up, we're gonna be mounting up our custom 3D printed vent covers with filters. Then we're gonna be adding our handle for our top lid. And finally, we're gonna be mounting on our custom 3D printed holders for our remote controls. Now, let's get this thing finished up. I'm cutting a notch for the power cord to slip out underneath the back vent, but I'm scoring the surface first to prevent any tear out. This is the remote control unit that the vacuum plugs into. And I only have one thing to say, where has this been all of my life? If you get anything out of this video, get this. It's a game changer for dust control. I had a lot of fun making these custom vent covers for this build to hold the filter fabric in place, but you could also just leave the hole wide open for airflow. I pulled the keychains off these remotes since it's never gonna be leaving the shop and I made custom holders for them. I also made some custom mounts for the nozzles that come with the vacuum and some hose size adapters. All right, now that we got our housing all done, let's talk about our innards. So this build is powered by our rigid NXT vacuum. Now this is the most powerful compact vacuum I could find. And honestly, it comes at a really good price. So I do recommend you check it out. But this is five horsepower and 100 CFM. Now as hobbyists and not production guys, this is as much vacuum as you're ever gonna need. I've used this with my separator on my table saw, planer, miter saw, sander. It all works flawlessly. I have zero issues with it. As for the separator, there are tons of different types of cyclone separators out there, and I've used several of them, and they all work actually pretty doggone well. But I went with the dust stopper separator for two reasons. One, it's low profile, so I can keep my housing as small and compact as I can, but it also comes with these two elbow pieces, which fit together and go into the center of our dust stopper, and then our vacuum fits perfectly into these elbows and it just matches the geometry of everything really well and I honestly couldn't have designed it any better. So if you're interested in either of these, I will have links to those down below in the description so you can check them out. Now, let's get these put into our housing. Now, how the separator works is our vacuum comes up and connects to the center, and that's going to pull all the dust through our hose and around our collector, and that's all gonna separate down into our five gallon bucket. And once our bucket is full, it's time to be able to empty this thing, which is really easy. So all we have to do is disconnect our two hoses from the separator, 
like this. And then we can unlatch our separator, which frees up our bucket to be pulled directly out of our housing where we can empty it out. Then once we're done, we can load this thing back in. And then we're ready to start collecting dust again. I thought this was pretty cool. So here's what the inside of the vacuum looks like after sucking up 15 gallons of dust. With the extractor ready to go, I mounted a second remote to my table saw, and I've gotta say, it makes it way more convenient to use. Alrighty, the Cyclone Dust Collector is done. It honestly works really well. It looks good inside of its housing, but the best part, it's remote control. Plus, it's all just a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood for this entire build. So if you're interested in building this, I do offer plans for everything. I'll have those on my website, link down below in the description. And additionally, all those 3D printed products you saw me put on this, I'm gonna be selling as a kit. And I really do think they enhance the build a lot. So if you're interested in those, those also will be in the video description. Now, as usual, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my future videos. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit the like button for me. It helps me out a ton and I really do appreciate it. And if you have any thoughts on dust control, which I'm sure plenty of people do, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.